Hey everyone, Budget Nerd here. Today we'll take a pretty close look at this Zero Lag streaming console, and you guessed it, see if it's any good. Peakdu reached out and wanted me to check out this streaming console they plan on releasing soon. They just released a Kickstarter for it. Peakdu has been around a while, making wireless HDMI and other wireless video streaming products using their millimeter wave technology. This millimeter or 60 gigahertz wireless tech allows for very quick wireless video transfer with nearly no lag. They decided to apply this wireless streaming tech to making a streaming gaming console, and here it is. This is what I was sent. I was pretty surprised by the case. It reminded me of my Steam Deck case. Upon opening it, though, its amazement sort of faded, as it seems like it was a generic case that wasn't really purpose-built for this console. It's far too wide, and the console has plenty of space to slide around as opposed to the Steam Deck case that fits just perfectly. Anyway, here's the console. I think it looks pretty cool, and I like the see-through plastic on the controllers. It's clearly inspired by the Nintendo Switch. The screen is a pretty good size at 7 inches and has a resolution of 1080p. The joysticks feel great, but do have sort of a loud click when you click them. I'm sort of confused why only one joystick had protective foam, but oh well. The buttons on the top are sort of small and are pretty clicky as well. And the trigger buttons, the larger ones, are not analog and are just buttons, only on or off, so that's a bummer. On the top you get a mini HDMI port, which I don't really understand. A USB-C 3.1 port that will accept the video signal which I also don't understand, and a USB-C port for charging the unit. You can also see the exhaust port for the fan. Yes, it's actively cooled. You also get an audio jack for headphones, and four buttons to turn it on and navigate the menu. On the back is the vent for the fan, and the wireless signal receiver behind some window. I'm told this on the bottom is a threaded hole for mounting it to a tripod, though I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. Also in the case, you get the 45 watt power adapter, a USB-C charging cable, the wireless transmitter. It needs that USB-C cable to get power. You get the USB-C cable for the transmitter, the USB dongle to connect the two controllers to your PC or console, a right angle HDMI adapter, a mini HDMI to HDMI cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and another HDMI right angle adapter angled the other way, which I guess I didn't feel nor notice in the case, but it's there. As stated, they have a Kickstarter page for this unit, and it's live now. Link in the description below if you want to check it out. It appears to have already met its goal, which is great, but if you're thinking of helping them with your funds, Make sure you stick around to the end of the video before you do. This kit will set you back $324, unless you were one of the ones to snatch up the early deal. The idea is you plug this HDMI dongle into your PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, or really most anything that has an HDMI port, and that can be controlled with a controller, and you can stream it to this device. Streaming tech isn't new, Xbox Game Cloud does it, NVIDIA has streaming hardware, and heck, even the Steam Deck will stream. However, all of these consoles use the network or internet to stream. So despite the best internet or network, there's always some inherent lag introduced when streaming this way. It takes time to send your inputs from the controller to your device through your wireless network into the router, through the internet to the game servers, have the servers process it, render an appropriate frame, and then send that back the way it came. It's amazing it works as well as it does, actually. This console aims to fix all of that lag by using 60 gigahertz, or as they call it, millimeter wave wireless to provide lag-free gaming. The downside is, with such a high frequency, 
it doesn't travel as far as lower frequencies and will not go through walls or large objects. The advantage is it will transfer data incredibly fast. With this, you can get a very good quality stream with nearly no lag. I say nearly because there is some lag, but it's so small you'd never notice it. With my camera on slow motion, shooting at 240 frames per second, you can see the lag, but it's just 7 frames behind, which, if my calculations are correct, is only 29 milliseconds, which is pretty good, honestly. While we're talking about delay, it's worth noting there is a bit of video compression when you stream with this. You can see there is a bit of loss in the smoke or clouds in the sky. It's not bad, honestly, and is totally forgivable. Otherwise, the stream looks great. The controllers are Switch-style controllers and even have the same rails on the sides. That means you could use Switch controllers or any third-party controllers, but this console will not charge any controllers. The controllers that come with this unit have USB-C ports for charging. It's sort of a drag, but it does keep the costs down. To connect both of these controllers to a PC or console, you probably will want to use this USB dongle they provide. Otherwise, it will be tricky or maybe impossible to get both controllers to act as one. The idea behind this console, on paper, is great. And the technology is pretty cool. But there are some issues to cover. Let's go over those now, starting with some of the smaller issues. When charging with this older style USB port, the screen would always stay on, and I couldn't turn it off. It would try to charge, but wouldn't be able to keep up, and the battery would slowly drain. If I used the USB-C to USB-C cable they provided, the screen would go off and it would charge, but the fan would run all the time. I'm not sure why. Speaking of the fan, it's not super loud, but you can hear it. Also, if the controllers are off and you lay it down while playing, you're going to block the fan port. The menu is neat. You can control a few things about the screen and some of the console's features. You use the four buttons on the top to navigate the menu, and it takes a while to figure out what each button does. The menu is also cramped and could certainly be bigger. I wish the screen was a touch screen, but I understand why it's not. Maybe next time. The case I mentioned was a bit too big, and I didn't see a manual. Peekdo did allude to this maybe being early hardware and packaging, so maybe you'll get a manual, but I didn't. Since you're connecting this thing to your console's HDMI port to stream, if you wish to play on your TV again, you're going to have to swap out HDMI cables each time, especially if you share the console with other family members who don't want to use this streaming console. Not a huge deal, but it could get annoying. When it connects, it usually connects pretty quick and effortlessly. Usually when it loses signal, it will connect pretty quick after you get it up and close enough. However, there were a few times it just wouldn't reconnect. Like this time when the console is legit a foot and a half away from the transmitter. Their HDMI dongle isn't small, and they do provide the HDMI adapters to help with the angle, but you might find it won't fit well in all scenarios. I couldn't get it plugged into our switch dock. I had to use the HDMI adapter, and with the HDMI adapter, it wasn't aimed at the room. You see, you need to have this antenna aimed right at you, or it's not going to work well, or at least won't work very far from the transmitter. You almost need an HDMI extension cable to be able to mount this adapter in a better position, but instead they give you this mini HDMI to HDMI cable. What am I going to use this for? Am I going to sit right in front of my PC and stream to a smaller screen with a more cramped and lesser quality controllers? I see no purpose for this HDMI cable, honestly. Ditch this and go with an HDMI extension cable instead, peak do. You also need to power this antenna with USB, and it will take up a USB port on your Xbox or PC or whatever you use. Speaking of controllers, they release from the console just like the Switch controllers do. 
There's a button on the back you push to release them. The left controller on this console doesn't lock in place real securely, and the controller would sometimes slip off without even pushing the button. Peakdo says the final product won't suffer from this. Also, in their promotional video, they show a person putting it in a bag. Now, why would you put this in a bag? You're tethered to your PC or home console and have to be within line of sight. You aren't going to take this to the bus and stream your game. It's not going to work. It's confusing marketing. So, how limited are you? Well, in my experience, fairly limited. If you get it aimed right at you, I was able to get a signal about 40 feet away. But that was holding it up and aimed right at the transmitter. You see, this window on the back is the receiver. And as I said already, you need line of sight. Pause your game and put the console down. You will probably lose the video signal. If you turn around, you will probably lose the video signal. If you are across the room and lower the console for a more comfortable viewing angle, you may lose signal, or it may get choppy. If you step into the next room, you will lose the video signal. Don't think you can walk out of your office and sit on the sofa in the next room and stream this. It won't work. You could get an extension cable and have the transmitter outside of your office, mounted or taped to the wall or door frame, aimed at your sofa, and then you may be okay. Right? Well, maybe not. Even if you do aim it just right and get a good signal where you want it, the controllers won't reach that far. During my testing, I found they started to have issues about 10 feet away. I was using their USB dongle to connect to my laptop. At about 13 feet away, they were pretty much unusable. The controller range is a definite limitation in a setup that is already plagued by limitations. I tested another wireless controller with my laptop and had no issues walking around the entire house, so the controllers really could use a range boost. This means you are stuck in the same room as your PC or console using a smaller screen with arguably less quality controllers. I frequently found myself playing on this console sitting right in front of my computer. I could have just saved the money and just used the controller and larger gaming monitor I already owned. This console has very few use cases. Having to aim an antenna directly at the unit doesn't mean you have a portable console. It means you have a console you can use in that room and nowhere else in the house, unless it's close to the antenna and within Bluetooth range of the PC. You can't leave the house with it. You can't even leave the room with it in most cases. And for $325, what most will pay for this, I just don't think right now it's worth it. For $75 more, you could get a Steam Deck. You can actually take it anywhere and play anytime, not needing to be tethered at all. I think this wireless technology is great. And yes, they do deliver a very nearly lag-free streaming experience with a great quality stream with a good screen, but the rest just sort of ruins those positives, in my opinion. Beakdo, if you want to send me a final version when it releases, if it indeed will be different, I'd be happy to release a follow-up video. In the meantime, keep an eye on the tech, but wait for version 2.0 of this console. Let me know in the comments what you think, and thanks for watching.